the steps aren't really that bad. But sometimes the algebra can be. So the first example, we want to replace f of x with y. Why are we doing this? f of x and y really represent the same things. However, when you're dealing with um, algebra and doing all these arithmetic operations, it's much easier just to deal with a y rather than the f of x. All right? So you don't really have to do this, but it's highly recommended just to do it because it makes a lot, it's much easier to be doing your math with y than f of x. So I replace f of x with y. Then step two is now I'm going to swap the variables. So that was step one. Step two, I have x equals y over y plus 1. Now I need to solve for y, step number three. So really, these first two steps everybody should be able to do, right? The third step is where it's going to get difficult for some problems and easier for others. So how do you solve for y in a problem like this? Well, when we have any time we have a y in the denominator or a variable in the denominator that we want to solve for, we have to get that variable off the denominator. So to get y off the denominator, what I'm going to do is multiply by the reciprocal of my denominator, which is just going to be y over 1, y plus 1. I'm not going to multiply by y plus 1 over y, um, because then you have to multiply by y over there, and then you're still going to have a y in the denominator. I don't want a variable in the denominator. So I'm just going to multiply by the denominator in the numerator, so then it will be um, divided to 1. Does that make sense? OK. So anytime you multiply um, a fraction with the term in numerator and denominator, that divides to 1. So now I'm left with um, y plus 1 times x equals y. Does everybody follow me? OK? Now, I still need to solve for y. And I have a y on both sides. But the best thing I would tell you guys to do is apply distributive property. So now I have yx plus x equals y. So to solve for a variable, though, you've got to get the variable on the same side. So I'm going to decide to get the y's on the left side. So to do that, I will subtract a y on both sides. And I will subtract an x on both sides. So by doing that, those go to 0, those go to 0, and I'm left with yx minus y equals negative x. Does everybody see what I did? I kind of used two steps in the same one to kind of break it apart. Anybody have any questions so far? We're just solving literal equations right now. Then in solving literal equations, we have two variables. We can only solve for one, right? So one technique we learned in literal equations is when you have two variables, you can factor out the common variable. So I can factor out a y from these two terms, correct? If I factor out a y, I'm left with x minus 1 equals negative x. Now you see my variable that I'm solving for is being multiplied by x minus 1. So to undo multiplying x minus 1, I will divide by x minus 1. And then I obtain y equals negative x over x minus 1. Then the last step is to replace y with f inverse. So my final answer is f inverse of x equals negative x over x minus 1. Yep. It's not always going to look like that, though. Don't just assume.